Hey friends, Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. We're just going to keep the open for business and keep the football gods up until tonight, 9 o'clock, actually working and doing some great stuff uh, for tonight's show and things. Did an interview with Dak's uncle, Philip. Oh my God. I, I, and I'm working on, I'm going to put that up a little bit later here, but... Um, Doing some work to the set, uh, trying to alleviate some of the problems. You know, I'm constantly growing, constantly doing more and more stuff, and literally building a set, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm learning as I go on. Um, so I'm actually adding one more monitor, so that way I can end up putting the audio input as well as the streaming stuff in there, so that way I can see it, and I don't have to keep pulling it up. Anyway, forget it. But I'm sitting here putting this stuff up, and I got NFL Network on, and I'm wondering, how is it that some of these guys have, have jobs? How is it Charlie Casterly is employed? This is the things that, that really just irks the hell out of me. Uh, let, let me let's just play this clip, and then, then we'll talk about it. Shout out to the University of Central Florida. For some reason, I said Tristan Hill went to TCU. Uh, a little insertion there on my part. It's UCF where Tristan Hill went, and he's going to have an opportunity to play in Rod Marinelli's defense. When they were able to form that relationship uh, during the draft process, and we look ahead to all of the relationships that they've formed, Charlie Casserly, with this talented group, in ways to pay all of them. Uh, that's coming up. How does that impact this offseason for Dallas? Well, I, here, here's what you got here as far as you got. You got your three guys, uh, your core players. Uh, now, what's interesting is their contracts come up in different years, which that's that's an advantage. Uh, here's the reason. First of all, you have Dak Prescott first, Amari Cooper second, Ezekiel Elliott third. If you put a lot of money into Dak this year, where you pretend what you can, you can take some money next year and redo his contract, giving you money to assign Amari. And in the following year, you have two guys that you can redo their contracts and extend them, uh, shove the money out a little bit farther, and then you get Zeke done. So that's one concept here you have over three years, which is okay. good. Now, to me, it's the Indianapolis Colts model. When they were championship football team, they had... Highest paid quarterback in football usually every year, Peyton Manning. They paid him. They paid Marvison, Marvin Harrison, a wide receiver. They paid Dwight Freedy to rush the passer. It's the Marcus Lawrence as far as the Cowboys equal there. And then Edward James at running back. Now, they had those core guys, and they paid them, and they won. And how do you win when you have to pay four guys like that? Now, people say, well, it's more money now. The cap is more now. I'm not sure what the percentage of quality is. But you got to do a great job in scouting, which the Cowboys have done. That's why this team is a team on the verge of taking a big step, and that's why Stephen Jones Thank you, Captain you know, Obvious. basically came out and said, man, we can do something special here, but we're going to have to have a little, a little bit of help. Now, in reality, Dak Prescott's, we know he's not Peyton Manning. He's not an elite quarterback in the National Football League. If he can get a good... Uh, uh, it, no. <sighs> look, look. Let me let me back that up. Mari Cooper, good. More money now. The cap is more now. I'm not sure what the percentage of quality is, but you got to do a great job in scouting, which the Cowboys have done. That's why this team is a team on the verge of taking a big step, and that's why Stephen Jones, you know, basically came out and said, "Man, we can do something special here, but we're going to have to have a little bit, a little bit of help." Now, in reality, Dak Prescott's. We know he's not Peyton Manning. He's not an elite quarterback in the National Football League. If he can get a good salary out of this, he ought to be very thankful about it. Mark. He ought to be very thankful about it. You know, like he's a beggar. Please, sir, can I have a check? You know, people keep talking about he needs to take a discount. He's taken a discount for the last three years. Aaron Rodgers makes more in one game than he's made in his whole professional career. Three years. He ought to be thankful. I'm not saying he is perfect just yet, but here's an interesting thing. Take QBR for the last three years. 
There's only six guys with a higher one over the last six years. He's higher than Jared Goff, higher than Carson Wentz. But I don't hear them talking about saying these guys aren't great quarterbacks. Take a look at Jared Goff the last five games of the season and into playoffs. And that Super Bowl. Does that look like an elite quarterback? I don't hear them saying that that guy needs to take a damn pay cut, take a break, give a team-friendly discount. This crap that you keep hearing over, uh, it, uh, is Kirk Cousins a great quarterback? Jimmy Garoppolo on eight games? Come on, man. Cooper, good player, a lead wide receiver? No, Ezekiel Elliott, hey, he's a Hall of Fame. Amari Cooper? I'll take him over. Pretty much anybody right now with his age, he's not an elite. Oh, we know he's going to get top dollar here. So it'll be interesting how it plays out. But credit the Cowboys to putting himself in this position where they're this good and have these players to pay. And it can be done. The Colts showed it. And, of course, Charlie's right now. What this does with the Cowboys having to pay so many of their key players now coming up, first likely to be Dak Prescott, then probably Amari Cooper maybe somewhere around the time of training camp. We'll see what happens to Ezekiel Elliott. No doubt he'd like a contract now. This coming offseason remains to be seen whether or not the Cowboys will actually do it. But, yeah, that is a lot of money to several top-end guys, and you've got to have those guys to be a good team. But it does put the onus on scouting with guys like Will McClay leading that personnel department with Stephen Jones uh, over him uh, working alongside his, his father. I mean, they need to find now cheap, really good players. And, you know, what the Cowboys have done over the past couple of years is draft incredibly well, which means, one, you have to pay some guys. But, two, it does allow you to, to get by on some really good, cheap players, at least early on in their career. And they need more of that out of this draft class. Like I said, I'm trying to understand how some of these guys have jobs, especially Charlie Casterly. Um, yeah. We'll definitely be talking about this tonight. I'm going to be working on getting the stuff set up. And um, sometime between now and then, I'll be putting up uh, that interview. With that uh, I love it. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you guys soon.